there are very few murders in Bastrop, a sleepy little southeast Texas town. Broken wings. And this one to be a young girl who went to high school, played sports, was active in her church. This would be the last person most people would believe would be involved in a crime. There are 32 HEB employees from Austin helping out at this Bastrop store, a small favor they feel for fellow workers trying to cope with a traumatic experience. Very sad for what happened. Almost all of the more than 100 workers from this store are attending the memorial service for Stacy Stites. At the church, at the funeral, the police place two camcorders in strategic locations. The camcorder that is placed in a box with a hole cut in the box, it's placed like that so that you can't tell that it's a video recording device. Four days after this crime, they don't have any direct leads on anybody. And so they're looking for anything that seems out of the ordinary, anything that looks like it might point to a suspect. We were supposed to be getting together for a wedding in a few weeks. Instead of going to Stacy's wedding, now we're going to Stacy's memorial. It was devastating to all of us, including Jimmy. He was definitely a man who had just lost his fiance. Jimmy went over to the coffin, and he had the wedding ring in his hand, and he put the wedding ring on her finger. Told her goodbye. Yep, told her goodbye. It was devastating. And she's buried with that wedding ring, and she's buried in her wedding dress. And uh, she worked hard for that wedding dress, and we all decided that that's what she should be buried in. There was a graveside service, and what seemed unusual to me at that service was just that Jimmy, her fiance, really didn't show a lot of emotion at all. Of course, everybody grieves in their own way. Now today, Stacy's mother and sisters say they have always believed that Jimmy was innocent. But at the time, Stacy's sister Crystal was so concerned about Jimmy's behavior that she hired a private investigator and even made a list of his questionable behavior. You kind of want to suspect the people nearest to her and then you try to figure it out in your head of what happened and how did it happen. and. But once we knew that she had been raped, it, we, our emotions were like, it had to be somebody else. We did not believe that Jimmy had hurt oh. Stacy at all. In fact, Jimmy himself even later talked about the pain he was feeling over Stacy's death. It's gonna be with me forever. I'll think about it, it'll be there. There's no way it's gonna go away. So Karen Blakely was the lead DNA analyst who processed the crime scene. She makes a telephone call to Rocky Wardlow, the lead investigator on the case. Karen Blakely told him the semen was deposited at the same time as the death. Essentially, she told him the rape happened at the same time Stacy died. It meant that Rocky Wardlow had the smoking gun. It meant that all he needed to do was to find the depositor of the semen. He is simply looking for a DNA match. Investigators obtained reference samples from 28 men who had some part in Stacy Stites life, acquaintances, friends, co-workers. Not one of them is a match, not even her fiance, Jimmy Fennell. So the police were wondering, is there some other explanation? What if Stacy had been cheating? Could that be a motive for Jimmy Fennell to kill her? It was hard being having the finger pointed at you. It was hard for them saying that, yeah, you killed Stacy, your fiance, that you did it because of these reasons, these reasons, you know. But, you know, I kept in my mind that I didn't do it. County Sheriff's Office. There's a recorded phone conversation in which a woman calls in anonymously 
and claims her son was having an affair with Stacy. I think Stacy was having a like, I, like eight, eight son. Okay, I'm almost positive of it. I mean, that's, we've all kind of assumed that. Who has a, a motive for this? Well, at this point, the boyfriend does. That's right. That's a prime suspect. The right. person that we're trying to find is a liaison. For the longest time, we've had our suspicions. Okay. The woman refuses to provide her son's name, although subsequently he was identified and he was ruled out. And as the call continues, you can hear the investigator's frustration. It's been four months, and this investigation is going nowhere. See, at this point, we're stymied. We've, we've hit a brick wall. Huh? I have to look at Stacy Stats' mom at least once a week, every day, in the face. <laughs> and it makes me not want to answer the phone because I know it's her. We can see that Rocky Wardlow continues to look at Jimmy Finnell through 1996 as, a, as his investigation continues to go on. We can see that because he gives him a polygraph test. One of the questions asked Jimmy was, did you strangle Stacy? Jimmy answered he did not. Another question asked Jimmy was, were you involved in the death of Stacy Stites? Jimmy Fennell stated again, he was not. The examiner determined that Jimmy was deceptive in these two answers. Jimmy, in defense of himself, said that he was emotional, that all he could visualize in his mind was her lying deceased in the casket. So it didn't concern you at all that he seemed to be deceptive on the polygraph test? No. Nah, I think we would talk about it and think that he was just upset. I think he felt bad that he didn't get up and take her to work that day. And, so, then, and then you feel like, if I had been there, this wouldn't have happened. Right. What was it that led them to eliminate Jimmy Fennell? Because of the logistic problems. Jimmy's truck was found in Bastrop. And he was home in Giddings, which is some 30 miles away. And so that was the problem, is that law enforcement could never make it make any sense that Jimmy had any involvement in this because they couldn't figure out how he ever could have gotten back home. Unless he had a friend who might have given him a ride. The investigators, the Texas Rangers, explored the possibility that somehow maybe someone had helped him and they could never find anything or anybody that credibly could have helped him. They looked at the mileage on the different patrol vehicles there at Giddings PD where he worked to see if there was any of those that were off and there weren't. They looked at whether there were bus fares for, for people that night and there weren't any. They looked at cab fares to see if there was some way he could have taken a cab. Jimmy Vanell himself has always insisted that he is innocent. They thoroughly vetted all the evidence they had and they cleared him. It was only after they matched the DNA to somebody that they dropped Jimmy as a suspect. Another woman is violently attacked, and this woman lives, and her case is about to change everything. I'm one of the investigators on the uh, Stacey Stein's murder. Do you even know who she is? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.